anyway, I'm trying to fix all of the things in, uh, and in case of uh, you are interesting, uh, we're trying to uh, uh, show all of the things in an open uh, discussion. So my, uh, my name is uh, Denis. I'm lead software engineer in uh, Global Logic Ukraine. Uh, actually, I'm focusing on uh, cloud uh, solutions, uh, Kubernetes and uh, SRE. Do you know the SRE? Site Reboot Engineering, yeah? So you, 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 you see I am start with the rebooting, yeah? Uh, actually, additionally, I'm um, just arriving from the DevOps stage. This is the biggest conf uh, DevOps conference in Ukraine. And uh, actually, uh, my role is a, a technical lead of the program committee. And I'm excited to be here in the DevOps days in Oslo. And I would like to actually say hello from all community, DevOps community from Ukraine to you. Yeah, Global Logic is top three company in Ukraine of uh, IT delivery, delivery the, uh, actually outstaffing and whatever. So we hiring a lot of DevOps engineers. So we actually uh, deliver the, this uh, expertise to our customers. So we have uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, expertise uh, to uh, uh, to hiring these engineers to interview and. And uh, what I would like to say that there is a list of three main definitions uh, that we can uh, describe the DevOps. So first of all, there is a skill uh, set. Uh, so next one is a tool set or technical stack. And the third, there is a maturity of the process, so the culture. And uh, this culture, this expertise, give us ability to make the decision what uh, types for DevOps is okay, and what the anti-patterns actually. So, what the, about the uh, tool tool set and the skill set? Let's uh, play some. So, uh, actually, it's not my computer, and I'm trying to do the best. Actually, we're trying to. So, uh, yep, <laughs> the private key. Uh, okay, I try. So, uh, one of the definition of uh, uh, DevOps, uh, the engineer to implement DevOps is uh, uh, this is the operation engineer that can read and write code. So, can you read what, this one? What the what the format of this? Who know? This is the web application. Uh, actually, I'm. Uh, I made some demo for you, and this is the uh, content. This is the SVG. This is a scalable vector graphic for the web. So this is the uh, points with the coordinates, and you can uh, actually dynamically uh, make the uh, web application. So uh, I have uh, actually front end. I hope you, all, all, almost of you, know this code, JavaScript. So I use the library that can dynamically actually uh, draw uh, the SVG, okay? Who know what, uh, what this one? Assembler, yeah, ISM. So uh, we have a content, we have a, a front end, and this is the back end. This is the web server application on poor assembler. It's uh, pretty good because it's, uh, its weight is just four kilobytes, you know, and you have container just 4.5 kilobytes, so it's nice. Of course, uh, if you can read and write code, you can uh, say that uh, we need a software engineer uh, in a DevOps exactly because uh, uh, because the DevOps. Is there any HR guys from the human resource? No? Great. So, uh, <laughs> so DevOps is, uh, uh, you know, DevOps engineer is not exist. DevOps is a culture, the collaboration f with the operation and development. So, and uh, you are not the 
single operation and developer. You are software engineer, so you make code, you know the infrastructure, so you need a tool set. So for the, uh, you know this one, there is a Terraform to launch the uh, Kubernetes cluster. In large scale, uh, we use the infrastructure as a code. So the part of the DevOps, the engineer who is implement DevOps is to understand how to infrastructure works. So uh, developer, uh, so how many developers here? Okay, skip this. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, thesis, but uh, actually, uh, developers uh, should understand uh, that uh, infrastructure is not a separate process of the uh, uh, development life cycle. It's included. So, uh, for, for the you know for the more convenient way, is we can uh, describe our con uh, infrastructure as a code. And uh, uh, one of more thing is. Uh, that we can use the uh, cloud uh, native CLI or API of uh, uh, our infrastructure. So we can, on a large scale, we can use the Terraform. On a small scale, we can just use the, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the CLI of, the, of this cloud. So, uh, of course, uh, the next step of uh, my uh, uh, my del uh, application delivery is to, we need uh, some infrastructure. So what, uh, what we can do? First of all, uh, there is a buzzy word, the, the cloud migration. Actually, on the DevOps stage, we have a discussion panel, uh, what the pitfalls, what the uh, re really uh, uh, success story to migrate to a cloud. Because the cloud uh, is not just some kind of, uh, you know, hosted solution, but uh, it's a distributed cloud, it's a private cloud. So a lot of, uh, you know, choices. So, uh, and um, one of them think that we should uh, speak about the cloud because it's now it's not just a trend. Is, a, uh, is some kind of, you know, needs we uh, bring to the industry. So, and uh, uh, what uh, I would like to uh, actually show you that this is, a, is broken, yeah, but uh, I'm I trying to describe, you know. Uh, we have a fresh uh, cloud solution, uh, uh, cloud setup, and uh, what we prefer to launch our application. We prefer launch the uh, Docker containers. This is some kind of uh, Google style. Inside of the Google, any job, any container, any application, they run in uh, actually containers. So how, how many containers per day running in a Google? Approximately one day, Google, how many containers? Three billion containers. So we sh we sh uh, they should uh, actually manage it. So, and you know, the, the most maybe popular trend and uh, the most, uh, you know, exciting tool is a Kubernetes. So the Borg, the uh, Google internal system that now is open source, the Kubernetes, uh, have, uh, give us ability to run a lot of stateless and stateful application in the cloud. So, in this stage, I have uh, actually uh, mm, fresh Kubernetes, and uh, I would like approximately I would like to show you how we uh, can manage something, because the next uh, part of uh, our deployment application in the Kubernetes, uh, there is a very uh, buzzy word is a serverless. Do you believe in serverless? In case you are development. You say yes, no servers. In case you operation, service exists. You know, so we, uh, virtual service machine or whatever, we actually use it. And uh, I would like to start maybe. Uh, Okay, I, I hope it's, it should work already for me. Oh, okay, it's work, I think. Let, let me show. Um, uh, the 
think. Oh yeah, so we have this one. I just log in. I, I just create the, uh, uh, some uh, virtual machine. It's take that, uh, just the 20 seconds to launch, and uh, I would like you to, to ask. Uh, what uh, more trend thing for today than serverless? What the trend for the, what the, on the cutting edge? What the most uh, you know uh, buzzy word than serverless for now? Ah, great. What what about the infrastructure? There is a edge computing. So we shift the computing to the customer. So there is the uh, Internet of Things, edge computing, 5G with the, uh, several layers of, uh, uh, of the edge computing. And I would like to show you some example. And uh, let me, okay. Because of uh, Kubernetes is, uh, uh, you know, it's some master nodes, it's a work, a workload nodes, it's uh, m more stuff. Is there any certificate ad admin, uh, certificated administrator of Kubernetes here? Okay, so there is, a, uh, there is a some kind of, you know, not, not so easy, trivial, complicated uh, e exam of the Kubernetes. But anyway, we would like to start something on, uh, on the edge. And what we can do? we can do next. Are you familiar with the K3S? So K8S, it's a regular Kubernetes. The K3S, this is the Kubernetes for the edge computing, for the Internet of Things. It's the smallest uh, lightware and production grade Kubernetes for the you know, uh, micro uh, computers or maybe edge computers, and uh, it's from, from Rancher. So, oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see L S L. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Let's start the timer. Just fifty seconds. Just fifty seconds, and you have the Kubernetes on the edge. So, LS key Okay. So, the it's very small, it's very fast, it's production grade and actually I would like to start uh, my application uh, on this edge and uh, Next, show you some kind of uh, uh, slides. So, deploy demo image. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yep. Uh, deploy. Okay. So, okay. No. Oops. Types, maybe. So, it's live demo. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. And this one, the ropes types. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, so expose, expose, deploy demo, port, 
and target port. Yep, expose port. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's running. So I have some, uh, you know, some kind of. Uh, we need uh, ingress here. Yeah, we need the ingress here. Ingress this one. So there is no ingress. So actually, what what I would like to show you. I try to find the console, yeah. Hmm? No, ah, it's a browser, okay. Yeah. That's very top. This one, maybe here. Yeah. So uh, I launched the, this application, actually, and uh, what the things that, uh, what, what, what I would like to show you on the Kubernetes, but it's now broken because it's not my computer, that uh, the serverless include uh, the most uh, three, you know, uh, two impo uh, important things. First of all, there is a service mesh. Do, do, uh, how many people use the service mesh in, the, in your deployments? So, okay, what is the server me service mesh in this, uh, in this point? Uh, uh, there is a Istio. There is a Istio is a, a trend of the service mesh. It's uh, uh, actually uh, coding by Google. Uh, so it's based on the Envoy. Envoy is a, uh, a lightweight proxy, production-grade proxy by company Lyft. And what the service mesh for our microservices, when we uh, launch a lot of services, we would like to get the telemetry, policy, and uh, you know, uh, distributed uh, trace, uh, actually, and uh, would like to uh, you know, control all of the things. So this is, in Kubernetes, there is a sidecar, a sidecar, uh, a sidecar uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 methods to launch every microservices with, uh, with the one proxy inside of the container. So, and the, all of the proxies build the mesh. So this mesh we control with the control plane and have all of the telemetry, all of the uh, you know, policy enforcement inside of the mesh. And top of them, there is a key native. Uh, in case of the uh, key native, there is a Google and Pivotal framework for serverless that we have launched the serverless application based on Kubernetes, based on uh, uh, Istio, and uh, the key native uh, bring us three main things, build, serve, and eventing. When we use the uh, actually uh, build, uh, CI CD process uh, for our application, uh, in, in ma mainly in general, uh, common case is uh, a separate service, Jenkins or whatever, or cloud, for example, Cycle CI uh, or uh, some cloud builds or whatever, but the key native uh, framework bring us uh, the build process inside of the cluster. So we uh, don't need a Docker, for example, uh, Diamond to build the container because it's open container initiative spe specification that any application that we can uh, write uh, with this specification can build the containers. So the key native build uh, make all of the things inside of the Kubernetes container. The service. S a service of the key native is uh, uh, they uh, configure all of the uh, uh, you know, service mesh boring stuff, and uh, we can launch uh, our application uh, as a pattern source to URL. So we just need the source, we just commit the, uh, our code, and all of the things make by key native automatically, and on the finish stage, we got the URL for our application. What next? 
Next is the eventing. Because the serverless application, the microservices, should uh, you know, work in the real uh, uh, life. And uh, eventing is one of the approach to get the events. So it can, can be pops up, it can be Kafka or uh, cloud pops up or whatever. So we can trigger our serverless application. And most important things that we can scale application and we can downscale our application with the serverless. So uh, in this point, uh, I would like to uh, actually switch to the uh, DevOps types and um, anti-patterns because the background for now that we are uh, actually uh, mentioned before uh, give us ability to understand this. This software engineer is okay to implement the DevOps culture with the uh, skill set and tool set. And after that, there is a two uh, main uh, you know, group. There is anti-patterns and DevOps uh, uh, some kind of topology. Matthew Skelton uh, is a uh, you know author of uh, uh, DevOps topology. Uh, I give you a, a, a direct, direct link. is an open source pro, uh, pro, uh, project. Uh, we can contribute and we contribute in this project every day because it's described the best practice and uh, you know. Uh, uh, some anti patterns on the devops we speak about uh, we, uh, we speak uh, about this with the Matthew, and actually we call the Matthew to the devops stage in ukraine but uh, all all years uh, already a scheduler and we ask to some rights to present this uh, you know framework to you uh, Matthew is okay uh, with this so uh, actually there is a uh, you know, some kind of uh, uh, first step that we have a si silos between the DevOps and uh, between the uh, developers and application uh, uh, operation. So uh, developers uh, through the application behind the walls. You know, in my local computer is everything works, and uh, I don't care about how uh, how it's uh, deployment on the on. Uh, uh, infrastructure. It's, it's a basic, you know, it's a basic uh, issue to uh, DevOps raised on the uh, industry. The next, the next thing that uh, when you are starting the DevOps transformation in the company, uh, uh, actually the company without the changes in, in the organization structure, uh, what they uh, do, they just hiring the DevOps, they uh, call him DevOps engineer, and uh, they change nothing. Because there is a uh, you know, separate group of DevOps or separate engineer in your company, but dev and operation also separate. So it's changed nothing, and it's a uh, you know, slow, effective uh, way to start the DevOps transformation. In the other hand, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, a uh, common uh, situation when the DevOps is just a, a tool set. So Dev trying to uh, hiring the DevOps that's no Jenkins, you know, some automation. Uh, in work case uh, is a cloud uh, knowledge, and uh, and that's it. So the same situation, no changes on organization structure uh, and no change in the process because operation not uh, actually uh, uh, involved in the uh, uh, software development cycle. In maybe seven years ago, uh, I worked for the uh, Israel vendor. It's a company we bring to mobile network operation the value-added services and this time we already dis uh, uh, actually distributed with the containers, but not the Linux containers, but the cargo containers. So uh, I'm flying to the Ulan Butter. Do you know Ulan, but Ulan Butter? There is a Mongolia. Where is the Mongolia? Something there, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'm flying to the Mongolia. And the next uh, uh, next car plane with the containers, the big containers with the rack of the equipment, uh, comes with me on the on the site, and 
all time in the flight, I think about the DevOps because you know uh, our R and D, R and D, or our uh, developers not see the customer uh, uh, alive, never. Our DevOps uh, don't speak with the customer even, you know, because we have a, a two type of ticket system. And in case the operation have uh, some uh, difficulties on whatever, uh, you just uh, open the ticket and whatever. But it's OK, but not in Mongolia. You know? Mongolia is a good country. Uh, land butter is the uh, best people maybe on the world. <laughs> and uh, actually, there is a, a big a machine room with the air conditions and whatever. So when you spend the seven or more t uh, hours in the air conditioned machine room, and application don't start. You love DevOps. You love the de uh, develop developers, and you think I should be DevOps ex exactly. So yeah. Uh, uh, what else? That uh, the, the next step of uh, uh, DevOps transformation and anti patterns is uh, when the our managers maybe uh, or uh, you know our team decide that we don't need operation. So we have a cloud. Uh, we have uh, actually UI interface. We have hosted solution. We, not, we don't need the operation. It's a good things for maybe for the start. And uh, after the scale become to our product, it's total flay, uh, fail. Because uh, uh, the hosted solution uh, with uh, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, click click ops, you know, it's not working for us because uh, uh, it's not uh, actually DevOps. Uh, it's not a, a developers' uh, requirements to understand all of the infrastructure because the complicated things as a network is the security uh, side and whatever. So uh, no no operation is totally anti-pattern here. And what else? that uh, we can shift to the uh, uh, DevOps types that can solve our uh, 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 this kind of situation with the, uh, maybe f three, four uh, m common, uh, actually, uh, practices. And uh, for the, our open discussion, I would like to pr uh, propose you um, Maybe start discussion. What what the best practice for you? How to organize organize these teams? But f uh, some some of kind of uh, actually uh, example for you. First of all, there is operation and developer collaboration. So uh, the, on, on the first uh, speech here, there, you 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 mentioned that uh, for uh, Phoenix project and three types. It's, uh, it's step by left, it's step by right, and the continuous learning. And one of the example is um, dev and operation collaboration. So first step is some kind of, do you know the hell Z, liveness probe, or readiness probe? It's, it's related to Kubernetes or whatever, yeah. So uh, for our application, we need the liveness probe to understand the application is live and the readiness probe, that application is ready to, uh, for the production traffic. And this is the first step of uh, uh, DevOps transformation when the uh, dev uh, comes to the operation and say, I would like to my application run to the in infrastructure. And operation says, uh, get the feedback, okay, let's instrument our code, you know, with the liveness and readiness probe. Dev think about, okay, so I can understand that my application is work and the operation involved in the development process. So this is the first step. And uh, actually, this kind of DevOps transformation, I work now with uh, such team. And uh, it's, you know, it's just initial state. What the next is a full, uh, actually shared, uh, uh, you know, processing with the operation and development. Uh, this is some kind of, you know, uh, single, uh, uh, the, there is an engineer maturity company with a single web application. For example, uh, Facebook, Netflix, and uh, the, uh, 
software engineer in this uh, uh, situation totally share all of the you know risks, all of the uh, uh, deployment process and whatever in this company. But uh, uh, you know there is a, not a lot of uh, teams that uh, totally share all of the uh, responsibility. Okay, and uh, you say about the SRE. So SRE is uh, one of uh, one of the type one of the you know best practice from Google because uh, many years ago uh, Patrick De Debois you know uh, he, uh, there, there is a father of uh, hashtag #devops you know uh, and uh, he say that uh, uh, in, in this uh, and this time the Google uh, faces uh, and experience the same problem because uh, there is um, you know silos with the uh, 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 dev and operation team, and they launch the new, you know, approach in Google, the SRE engineers. So the first type, they trying to, you know, hiring the uh, uh, engineers with, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, shared skill set with the uh, coding and operation, and after two years, uh, they actually, uh, you know, align all of the engineers on the same level on the Google, and they say this is the software engineer. So they can write the code, they can uh, launch the application. And SRE actually implement DevOps. So what the main, two main points on the SRE? First of all, uh, developers on call, you know, uh, developers on call, so in case you start your application in the uh, uh, um, in the cloud, you are response this night, you know, you response on this day. And the second one, the operation uh, engineer can reject your code in case he found that it's not so good for the production. This is the point of uh, ASRE. So, actually we have uh, uh, three or four more uh, best practice uh, for the uh, uh, DevOps types. And I would like to ask you, in case you're interesting, I'm trying to fix all of the things on the technical side and show you uh, uh, how we uh, find these uh, types actually in real life, how it works, how it works the infrastructure. So join us on the uh, open discussion. And uh, thank you, and sorry for some, you know, uh, production deployment, yeah.